My name is Professor Galileo. And since it's the first day of class, we'll keep things simple. Someone come up and draw the universe. <laughs> Don't be shy. Anyone will do. Professor Cologne? Master Bonicelli, uh, I was just, um, well, examining the, the effect of, of human ow, uh, weight on tree branches. You were spying on Professor Galileo, weren't you? Well, I, 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 I mean, he, well... You're jealous. Jealous? <laughs> Me? Italy's greatest astronomer? Jealous of some young stargazer? I don't mind if you keep an eye on our new professor. But I suggest you do it from the back of his classroom. Oh, oh. Come now. Surely one of you knows what the universe looks like. Segredo, is it? Come on. Oh. Well, the Earth is here at the center, followed by the moon. Uh, then comes Mercury, then Venus, and then the sun, of course. After that comes Mars, Jupiter, then Saturn, I believe. So, the Earth is at the center of the universe and all the planets revolve around it? Of course. How do you know? Because Aristotle said so. Aristotle was a brilliant man, but he wasn't always right. <gasps> For instance, Aristotle said a heavy object would fall faster than a lighter one. Do you believe that? I do. Unless you can prove otherwise. <laughs> Follow me. Professor, what you're doing is very dangerous. I won't hit anyone. No, I mean, it's dangerous to say Aristotle is wrong. It's like saying the church and the Bible are wrong. No, it isn't. Aristotle was only a man. Yes, but many of his teachings have been merged with the Holy Bible. I know. They are sacred doctrine. They are one man's ideas, and some of them are wrong. If you persist in this, they can call you before the Inquisition. And if you're convicted of heresy, you can be burned at the stake. What good is knowing the truth? you're not willing to defend it. Now, if Aristotle was right, this 10-pound ball should fall much faster and hit the ground much sooner than this one-pound ball. Watch out! I don't want to hit anyone! <laughs> Although it might knock some sense into you, Cologne. <laughs> Don't believe it. It's, it's some sort of trickery. We found this in your classroom. Can you explain it? It's a model of the universe. But the sun is at the center. Yes, and all the planets, including the Earth, revolve around it. Professor, the Church will not allow you to teach this idea. But it's the truth. According to you. According to everything we're learning. It is not the official doctrine. The official doctrine on the universe is based on the scientific thinking of one man who lived 2,000 years ago. The Earth is at the center of God's creation. You see, we are surrounded by the heavens, which are perfect, unchanging, and forever revolving around us. It's a beautiful idea, but it isn't true. Oh. Professor Galileo, what proof do you have that you are right? I can only prove that Aristotle was wrong. That does not make you right. I'm afraid I must ask you to teach only the official doctrine of the Church. That the universe revolves around the Earth. I cannot teach 
what I know is wrong. <sighs> then you can no longer teach here. Yes! Oh. <clears throat> show you my latest invention. I call it the proportional compass. By moving the arms and reading the numbers here, you can calculate anything. Square roots, volumes, density. It even converts currency. What can I say? You've done it again, my friend. Truth be known, we'd do anything to have you as an instructor here at the Jesuit College. Well, truth be known, I'm looking for a job. Oh, it's a blessing, a miracle. Oh, I've been praying for a mathematics instructor. I want to teach astronomy. Astronomy? I think I'm on the verge of proving something very important. That Aristotle was wrong. The sun, not the earth, is the center of the universe. Oh, I see. I know it's not the official doctrine of the church, but I really believe it's true. Can you prove it? Well, not yet. Galileo, my friend. I just, if Aristotle was wrong, wouldn't the church want to know about that? Truth cannot hurt the church. Give us some time to think about it. There's no way Galileo can teach here in Rome. No. The Inquisition would convict him of heresy in an instant, and he burned for it. What if I got him a job in Venice? Could you? I'm sure I could. Yes. Free-thinking Venice. He can teach what he likes in Venice. He won't be paid as well, but at least his life won't be in danger. The shame of it all is he's... probably right. Have you ever known him to be wrong? Well, no. Let's draw the shade and lower the model. All right. If you're going to be my assistant, you'll have to learn to defend my theory. I'll pretend to be the enemy. Begin. Despite what Aristotle says, the sun is at the center of the universe and all the planets revolve around it. Including the Earth? Including the Earth. I already see a flaw in your theory. If the Earth revolved around the sun, we would always be in daylight. But since we're not in constant daylight, that can only mean one thing. The sun revolves around the Earth. Well, you raise a good question. And here's the answer. Not only is the Earth revolving around the sun, it is also spinning once every day, giving us day and night. Very interesting. Too bad it's all make-believe. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm just in town saying goodbye to some old friends. It seems I've been invited by the Pope himself to go to Rome and serve as one of his chief astronomers. Congratulations. Why, thank you. That's very kind of you. But then, I suppose good things come to those who stay loyal. Farewell, Galileo. I don't suppose we'll ever meet again. On the contrary. As soon as I can prove my theory, I'll be coming to see you in Rome. Really? <laughs> Allow me to make a prediction. You'll grow old waiting for your proof. Oh, and by the way, you're free to teach your heresy here in Venice, but I wouldn't go publishing your ideas, or then I will see you in Rome, tied to a burning stake. I know the proof is out there, Spredo. We just can't see it. Hmm. Listen to this. 
A man in Holland has invented a toy called a spyglass. Spyglass? It makes things far away look close up. It says here, even though the image is fuzzy and upside down, the royals find it very amusing. What? This could be it. Our proof. What? If we can perfect this spyglass, we'll be able to see our proof. Come on, Hans. Wake up. Uh, no, no, I'm coming, I'm coming. This is an emergency. An emergency for eyeglass. Yes. Fire is an emergency. For fire, you wake people up in the middle of the night. Blurry vision is not an emergency. I'll pay you five times the regular amount. Then again, who am I to judge other people's emergency? <laughs> Come in. If it hurts me more than a man can bear If it leaves me lonely and bruised If it costs me everything I hold dear My heart's got to know What is it? How did Aristotle describe the moon? He said it was a perfect, heavenly crystal sphere. That's not what I see. Venus looks like a half moon. Well, let me see. How could Venus look like a half moon unless it was revolving around light? Jupiter has four moons. If Jupiter has moons revolving around it, then obviously not everything revolves around the Earth. Start writing, Sir Grateful. We found our proof. Careful now. You can't just publish the idea that Aristotle is wrong. Now that I have the proof, I can. You don't get it, do you? You're trying to change 2,000 years of tradition. You might as well try to lift the Vatican off the ground. With truth as my lever, I will do it. Man, I've got one left. Best-selling book I've ever had. Sold out in one day. Couldn't believe it. Yes, 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 yes. Just give me the book. This Galileo is an absolute genius. Well, he's certainly the greatest mind of our day. <sighs> Bring Galileo to Rome. Yes. I, I mean, yes, Your Holiness. I, I will let the Inquisitor know that you wish to have him tried for heresy. No, not yet. Let's have Brother Clavius talk to him. Perhaps we can reach an agreement. It's... Uh, very interesting. Interesting? What, what do you mean? It's proof. Brother Clarkus, the mood, Jupiter, it's all solid proof. His Holiness the Pope must see this. Once he does, I know he'll correct the teachings of the Church. Well, actually, the Pope is already aware of your discovery. He is? What does he say? He has asked that you sign this. It says that that you promise not to teach that Aristotle is wrong. What? Where's Cardinal Barberini? Sagredo is right. Proof doesn't change anything. Please, Galileo. I won't do it. Look, you can still talk about your idea. Please. If you sign, you can continue your life's work. But if you don't, well, men have been burned at the stake for less. Look me in the eye and tell me I am wrong. There goes the greatest man of our time. He 
he's a heretic. And I'll see him die the death of a heretic yet. Incredible. No, this is incredible. Pope Paul has died. What? Who is the new Pope? It's Cardinal Barberini. He'll understand. Surely Cardinal Barberini will let the truth be taught. I can't tell you how good it is to see you again, Galileo. Believe me, I feel the same. Is Brother Clavis still in Rome? No. Oh, poor Clavius died some years ago. I'm very sorry to hear that. Look, I think I know why you've come to Rome. I still cannot allow you to teach that Aristotle is wrong. I only... But I will allow you to write a book. A book? Yes. One that fairly presents both points of view on the universe. But you may not draw any conclusions as to who is right or wrong. I understand. No, no, no. This passage argues too strongly for your point of view. But it's the truth. Are you sure you want to do this? I have the permission of the Pope. This book is not fairly written. The man arguing for Galileo is talking all the time, incessantly, page after page. He promised me a balanced view. Heretics don't keep promises. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Did you know that the name of the man defending the church is Simplicio? So? It means simple-minded. And the rumor in the streets, Your Worship, is that he modeled Simplicio after you. Me? I'm afraid Galileo must be tried by the Inquisition. No. You will allow him to attack the church? It's Aristotle he's attacking. No one will understand that, Your Holiness. Do you want to be remembered as the Pope who let the church be overtaken by heresy? I'm Galileo. You are requested to appear before the Holy Inquisition. Ah, ah Professor Colomb, I found what you were looking for. An agreement written 20 years ago by a brother Clavius and signed by the scientist Galileo. Hmm. <laughs> You're very good. It looks just like old Clavius wrote it himself. Do you know why you have been summoned before the Inquisition? I imagine you found some cause to be offended by my book. How could we not be offended by it? It teaches that you are right and the Church is wrong. I did my best to keep my promise to Pope Urban. I presented both arguments as fairly as I knew how. If your book was fairly written, why does the Church find it so offensive? Perhaps the Church sees how weak Aristotle's argument really is. The simple truth of the matter is this. You teach that the Holy Bible is wrong. I never said the Bible was wrong. If you say you are right, then you say the Holy Bible is wrong. I believe the Bible teaches us how to get to heaven, not how the heavens were made. This man is a heretic. Commissary General, may I speak? Professor Galileo, you say that you have kept your promise to the Pope in writing this book. I believe I have. Yes. Well, what about your promise to the previous Pope, Pope Paul? What did he do? Read it. I have here an agreement signed by Professor Galileo 20 years ago. It was written on behalf of the Church by the late brother Clavius. Do you remember signing this? Yes, I have a copy right here. It reads, I, Galileo, agreed to never teach that the Church is wrong about the universe, nor will I teach my opinion about the universe as the only correct view. And I have been true to that promise. Have you forgotten that there is more? 
It continues, and furthermore, I also agree that I will never even mention my view of the universe again so long as I live. That was not part of our agreement. Really? Then why is it written right here? Well, it isn't written here. Galileo begged Pope Urban for permission to write this book, even though he had promised Pope Paul that he would never mention his point of view again. I was never told by anyone that I could not mention my point of view. I have the proof right here. You can see it with your own eyes. Look! Professor Galileo, why should these men look when they already know the truth? Yes. How silly of me to think that men should believe what they can see with their own eyes. Professor Galileo, you have been found guilty of heresy, which carries a sentence of death. <laughs> However, owing to the kindness and mercy of His Holiness Pope Urban VIII, your sentence has been commuted to life under house arrest. What? Only house arrest? In addition, all copies of your most recent book will be collected and burned. And you are no longer allowed to write or publish any book whatsoever. Any attempt to do so will result in a sentence of death. For it with the rest. It's done. Everything I ever taught is written. No one would ever dare to publish it. Not here, but maybe in Germany, Holland. Someone would have to smuggle it out. If he were caught, he'd be put to death. Now, wouldn't it be best just to wait for things to change? Don't you think, Galileo? Galileo? Galileo. Thief! Guards! Guards! Fish. You lost it! It's a trick! Check the house! Galileo's final book was published and widely read. Fifty years later, it inspired Isaac Newton to develop his theory of gravitation, which later gave birth to Einstein's theory of relativity. Galileo was indeed the father of modern physics and astronomy. But more than that, he dared to think the unthinkable and defend the indefensible. Galileo dared to tell the truth. <laughs>